All right, guys, so in this uh, tutorial or walkthrough, uh, I want to go over how I did this uh, art piece, this typographic piece, which is basically uh, turning calligraphy into something that's more modern, fresh, and uh, I do that using uh, some 3D techniques. So I'd like to walk you through how I did that step by step so that you can take any, it uh, doesn't have to be calligraphy, any kind of typographic piece and bring it into 3D and give it the same kind of energy. Uh, the programs that I'll be using are uh, 3D Max. Uh, I'll be rendering in V-Ray, which is totally optional. You can do whatever you want. And I'll be using some plugins. I'll be using a plugin called Tyflow. And then at the end, I'm gonna take it all into Photoshop and composite it and just show different techniques of how you do the final touch-ups. Just an important note, if you don't use 3D Max, you can use Cinema 4D, you can use Maya. So it's all about the technique, which is pretty basic and standard in all these softwares. It's nothing specific to 3D Max. So the whole idea is just to share the workflow with you guys versus the exact uh, tools that you need within 3D Max. And if you use 3D Max, then that's awesome. You can just follow along and do exactly what I'm doing and get to learn the technique. And then hopefully you can apply it to any typographic piece that you want and even enhance it and take it to new and different levels. All right, guys, so let's get started. So this was the initial calligraphy that I had. It was done by a calligrapher called uh, EJE Studio. You can check out his work on Instagram. He does some awesome stuff. And what I wanted specifically uh, to do was, uh, or to use, was to have a calligraphy that's basically one line. And you can see this is kind of broken up into different pieces, but each piece is basically one line. And that's why this technique works really nice with calligraphy, because it's usually like a script. So even if you're using like a font that's that looks like a script, then this would be perfectly fine for this tutorial. So, so what I did here was I took this uh, piece that I liked and I took it into Illustrator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock that layer. I'm gonna start tracing. Just use the pen tool, press P and try to make a line, try to make your path go through the center of that uh, calligraphy piece that you have. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it some color. This is just uh, initial setup just so I can see what I'm drawing. Uh, I'm gonna give my border some color. And let's just keep doing it pretty quick. You don't have to be very precise. We're gonna clean stuff up as we move along. And as we move towards going into 3D, it's gonna also get cleaner and cleaner. So, so don't be like super specific about putting the, the path exactly in the center. So I'm gonna keep on doing the line and as i said we'll, we'll go back at the end and we'll try to clean it up a bit more but for now let's just get something initial down and uh, something like this is is pretty cool all right as, as you can see i'm starting to go back in and select some points select some curves trying to get as close as possible as i can to the center of that tube that's of course if i want to preserve the what the actual calligraphy looks like. So if you wanna freestyle and do something a bit different and kind of go on the borders or the edges, that's totally fine. And I'll keep doing that. And I think I'm getting close to something that I'm a bit more happy about. Uh, and once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna select it all. Look what it's, I'm just gonna move it. Check out how it looks, everything looks good. All right, so I'm gonna select it all and I'm gonna cut it and put it into a new document to make sure I only have the path and make sure that your uh, path fits within the, the document size. All right, save it out. And this is, this is an important step when you save it out, at least for 3D Max. So make sure you set it to Illustrator 3 and that should allow you to import it back into 3D Max. So now that we have the path, uh, we're gonna look at how to use this path and turn it into 3D in the next step.
All right, so now let's open up uh, 3D Max or any software of your choice, as I mentioned before. Uh, we're gonna go to File, Import, and we're gonna select our file, press OK. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our path uh, make sure you scale it up a bit. All right, so I'm gonna select my my path, and under Edit Spline, I'm gonna select uh, Spline, and I'm gonna choose the top piece because I know the end result. I want to have the top piece and the bottom piece. They're gonna be a bit different in terms of color, so I'd like to work on each of them separately. And of course, it's up to you if you want to group them together or you want to work on each element separate. All right, so select. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna select the top piece. Uh, while I'm on the spline and I'm gonna scroll down I'm, I'm gonna find something called detach so detach that press OK and what what that's gonna do is it's gonna make this into a separate object so now we have whatever we do to this is not gonna affect the the other piece which is under it all right so there we go we have our two pieces uh, what I'm gonna do now is under rendering select Enable in renderers, enable in viewport, and this is our very initial setup for turning this into a tube. Uh, maybe 0.43. Okay, uh, then set the steps the steps to something like 64. We're gonna reduce this later, but this is uh, this is basically the smoothness of the line. So if you set it to two, it's gonna look a bit choppy, and if you do 64, it's gonna be super smooth. Uh, let's do the same thing for the the bottom one. Uh, let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, I think 0.5 is better than 0.4. Okay, so I'm going to rotate it a bit. So now basically what we're going to do is the, is the cleaning up process. So you can see that there are some uh, lines intersecting through each other. Uh, and what we want to do is kind of loop them together nicely so that it looks like intersecting uh, or overlapping tubes that uh, that feel more fit better into the 3D space versus 2D. So so again, I'm going to go to Edit Spline and I'm going to select my vertex because I want to control all, all those points that I have. And I'm going to just start to move stuff. I'm going to start to rotate some of the points. Uh, especially the endpoints, I like to rotate them so they're facing the inside, because at the end I'm gonna. The plan is to kind of push them towards uh, a wall that we're gonna create, and it feels like this is like a neon light that's coming out of a wall. So, so, so let's just do that. Uh, there's a lot of points, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast forward this part a bit, and. It's just trial and error, and we're gonna see what looks better. I mean, push stuff in, push stuff out, and yep, keep doing that until you're happy with the results. And yeah, let's keep on going. Let's uh, let's fix those vertices. One interesting point is that I mean, you don't want to push everything towards one side. So try to really think of it as a 3D space, and that's the beauty and the power of 3D that it gives you depth. So the more depth you have, the more interesting it gets. The more overlapping you have, the more interesting it gets. And again, it's all a, it's a trial and error process. So so push some points out, push some points in, see what kind of overlaps look better. And and you can just decide along the way, and you can always change stuff later. So so nothing is set in stone. So just play around with it and have fun. All right, so, and, and then we have two dots. And what, what I want to do with those dots is, uh, because it's turning it into a, an outline, I want to delete those dots. But first, I want to create a sphere and place it in the same position as those dots. And then just select my spline and delete those, get rid of those. So at least you have a clean sphere that, that resembles a dot. Uh, if, you feel some, if you feel at some points like this uh, this one here is giving me some trouble. It's not, it doesn't look too smooth. It looks a bit weird. Uh, again, select your vertices. And what you can do is you can right click, then you have a couple of options. So if you do the Bezier corner, it's gonna give you those uh, handle, those uh, two different handles, and you can adjust the curve accordingly. Uh, but another nice one that I like to use sometimes is just the smooth. It doesn't give you control over the handles, but it uh, you 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 know for sure that it's gonna it's gonna smooth out that point. So so again, that's something that you can play with. 
uh, and just just see what works out best for you and the calligraphy that you have. All right, so now that I'm a bit happy with my with my lines and paths, uh, I'm gonna go and select all those endpoints, rotate them, make sure they're facing uh, facing the inside. And as I said, we're gonna kind of push them out later so that they go through a wall. And as you do that, some points might need fixing, but uh, in general, that's what we're gonna do. So so just rotate them and make sure they're 90 degrees uh, facing facing the other side. And as you realize, this is a pretty similar process to Illustrator if you're used to using Illustrator. And of course, we can do all these paths to begin with in 3D, but I personally like to use it in Illustrator because it gives me more control. But one thing to note, and this also applies to Illustrator, is the, the less points you have, the smoother and the nicer your curves will look. So. So maybe a beginner mistake would be to add a lot of points thinking that it's going to give you more control. But in fact, the less points you have and the more precise they are, the much, much, much nicer the end piece is going to look. So that's something just to note and keep in mind. Because I have done that mistake before where I've, when I first started out, I used to put a lot of points and and it just, it, actu it actually becomes a, a burden to work with and it becomes a very difficult task to to smooth stuff out. But if you just have less points and the more minimal it is, the much nicer it's gonna look. All right, so so we wanna get this somewhere close to let's say 90, 95%. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna still clean some stuff up at later stages. But uh, thickness-wise, uh, like how smooth the lines are, uh, let's just get it into a good place, something that we're happy about, we're comfortable with, and yeah, just some finishing touches here. I think it's starting to look good and interesting. And you can see those uh, overlapping lines. Like one goes above the other, then it goes under the other. And just try to play along with that up and down effect. And just some final smoothing out. All right, now that it's done, it's a bit easier to decide what thickness we want. I think I want to play with this a bit. So maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Uh, I think 0.7 looks nice. Mm. And yeah, you can see the sub steps that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we're, go we're gonna take it down to two. And we're, we're gonna smooth it out again at the end. So we're just gonna do it in a different technique. So make sure your sub steps are back to two. Uh, we're in low poly mode now and what we're going to do now is go to the modifier list, select edit poly and go to the polygons uh, and choose polygon and select all those endpoints that we created that are facing 90 degrees that will be facing the wall and select those and just uh, delete them for now. All right, now we're going to select border and border basically selects every edge uh, that is at the very end of the object that isn't connected to anything. So select border, which are all those uh, tubes that are, that are facing the wall. And what we wanna do is press shift and drag it outside. And it's gonna just extrude and extend those uh, that border. And then to make it neat, uh, align it to the Z axis and we're going to do the exact same thing for the bottom object and I'm going to look at it from a top view because it's going to allow me to see uh, what the first object where the first object is and where I ended so I'm going to just align it I'm going to eyeball it and I'm going to do the exact same process and just make sure everything is aligned all right, now select both objects. Again, we're gonna go to the modifier list. Uh, press T, it's gonna give you, uh, press T, and we're gonna choose Turbo Smooth. And I'll give it maybe two iterations. And now everything is, is smooth again. All right, one more thing also we can do is we can uh, use a shell modifier. I like to use this on lights. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but 
uh, it gives a very nice refrac refraction uh, effect at the very end. So it's going to look like an actual uh, light tube. And what Shell does, it, it basically gives your tube a thickness. So play with the outer amount or the inner amount, depending on uh, where you want the thickness to be, on the inside or the outside. And that's also another way where you can give your tube some more thickness. Uh, so I think I want to go something super minimal, maybe 0.06 is nice. All right. Uh, all right, so now let's just do a quick setup for our scene. Uh, I want this to be a square, uh, so I'm going to go to the render settings and just set something up like 1200 by 1200. And then I'm going to press Shift F on my keyboard, and that's basically what's going to render out. Uh, choose a nice angle, make sure uh, the composition looks nice. I'm just going to fix this. I feel it's, it's, a, bit, it, it's a bit sharp. Okay, that looks good. All right, so uh, make sure your composition is just how you like it. And then you press Control C, and it's going to set the camera up exactly based on the viewport that you're in. Okay, I'm seeing one more defect here. Uh, this stuff will happen, and I'm not sure why this happened, but what I'm going to do is, it looks a bit squashed. So what I'm going to do is I'll do a very quick technique. Uh, all right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, uh, let's do edit poly one more time. And uh, let's go to element. Let's select that squished piece, uh, that defected piece. And at least we're going to separate it. And now we can just work on that on its own. And let's go to the edit poly and choose edge. Double click on one of the edges. And it's going to give you, it's going to select all the edges all around. And then let's select create shape from spline. So that's a very quick and nice technique where it's gonna it's gonna give you a new path, and it's gonna be based off the on the line that you just selected. So now that we do that, it's gonna uh, it's gonna give us a very nice and uniform line that isn't defected anymore. All right. So so now that we have this, let's delete the the squished object that we have, and let's also adjust the thickness. And that's that for this part. And this was actually maybe the the heaviest part of this workflow and it's just getting that tube to look right and nice and now what we're going to do next is uh, details we're going to look at materials lighting and uh, rendering all right see you guys in the next one all right guys welcome back to the third chapter of this walkthrough uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set the HDRI uh, or we're going to set up some of the materials, some of the lighting and it's going to be a super easy setup but a very very effective one that you can use on all your scenes. So in 3D Max uh, press 8 and it's going to pull up this environments and effects tab or window and you'll see environment maps which says none at the moment uh, select that select that and choose bitmap so we can choose our HDRI image and I'm using I have a set of uh, HDRI images which uh, are I use on most of my scenes they're from Grayscale Gorilla uh, they're paid you have to pay for them but it's it's really worth it but you can find a lot of free ones online as well. So I'll try to share some links of some free resources as well as some paid resources. So I'm going to choose this HDRI. And of course, it's up to you what kind of HDRI you use. And it's going to give you very interesting and different effects. And then I'm going to press M. And it's going to pull up my material editor. And I'm going to drag the HDRI just, that just got imported in my env environments window and pull it into my materials editor at least so I can see it and I can control it I can rotate it and so on and if I go to view image you can see that this is my HDRI uh, which is good for now I don't think I want to do any changes but it's, it's good just to have it in your material editor because uh, it gives you the power to also change the strength of it so if it's set to a multiplier or an intensity of one at the moment and you do two is just going to give you double the lighting and so on 
All right, so now that we have our HDRI set up, it means that our scene can be lit, which is, uh, which is a very good start. All right, so the next step is uh, we wanna add two lights, one from the bottom, one from the top, that are gonna throw, throw a bit of highlight color onto our uh, calligraphy, onto our tube. So I'm gonna do that by selecting this V-Ray light from the left. Again, I'm using V-Ray in 3D Max. If you're using any other software, it's gonna be the exact same process. So it doesn't matter what kind of lighting you use, just think of the workflow and the process. All right, so I'm gonna pull this uh, regular standard V-Ray light from the left, just click on it, and I'm gonna just do a rectangle like this. And I'm gonna put one on top of my 3D piece. Uh, maybe I can adjust the length to, let's say, 65 by 20. I like to use uh, full numbers, and and it's best to change the light's length and width from the from the light menu on the right instead of just scaling it up and down. It's just good practice. All right, so I'm gonna put this on the top, and then I'm gonna press Shift and rotate my light so it's gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna move that to the almost exact same position but from the bottom. All right, so the top light, let's give that a color of let's say blue and I'll just lower the intensity a bit to say 10 and the bottom one I wanna make it a bit more intense but I'm gonna go with a darker color, 30 so that's why I want it to be a, a bit more intense. I'll make it 30 and I'll choose, let's say a dark purple, something like that. Okay. And uh, now let's press M again, go into our material editor. And let's pull up uh, V-Ray Fast uh, subsurface material, which is called SSS. So now we want to create that backdrop, which uh, which will be almost like the wall that goes behind our neon tube light. So I'm going to go and create a plane. And maybe something square, since our scene is square. So I'll do like 120 by 120. Uh, if you press Alt and A, it's going to give you the Align tool. So I'm going to press Alt and A, then select my... Uh, calligraphy piece just so that align it aligns to the center of it and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and pull it back so just make sure that it looks good from your camera that all the edges fall uh, outside of the camera and yep that looks good and now this is a very basic setup okay so back to the material we're gonna do the material for our wall uh, right click on your material uh, assign material this is gonna put it on your wall and now let's just change some values and colors uh, I'm gonna do a purple here of course you can just use a very standard V-Ray material but the reason I like to use this subsurface sometimes is that the way that it uh, reacts to light the way that it reflects and refracts light it's very interesting so uh, I think I think with a scene like ours, it's, it's going to make a subtle difference, but it's going to be a nice difference. So I'm just going to do some values here. These are some colors that I uh, tend to use, so I kind of know the values. But it gives, uh, the main color is going to be purple, and then it's going to mix in some of those colors that I just set. And of course, you can experiment with it and see what works best for you. Okay, so this looks good. And let's see... Let's see how this looks, maybe. Or before that, let's set up our... Uh, let's also create the material for our glass. All right, so let's see what this looks like now. And if we go to our render menu, and you go to V-Ray, there are two ways to do this. I'm going to show you both ways. And you just press Start IPR. This is basically going to show you your render in active mode, which is uh, as you change stuff, you're gonna see it directly happen in the render screen. So, so you can see some of the purple at the bottom from the light that we created. You can see some of the blue on the top. It's a very subtle blue. And the scene overall is super, super dark, but that's nothing to worry about. We're gonna go here on the right. Uh, and I'm using V-Ray 5 here, so if you're using V-Ray anything uh, lower than V-Ray 5, 
uh, similar techniques. Uh, it's just the menu looks different. All right, so I'm going to create uh, a curve layer and I'm going to adjust this just like Photoshop. And then I'm going to create an exposure layer. Don't overdo it, otherwise you're going to kill all the shadows. And yep, I think this looks nice. This is the kind of purple that I want. I'm after a dark purple. You guys can see the, the purple light and the blue light from the top and bottom, which looks very interesting. And yeah, so, so, so let's see what it looks like with uh, a higher intensity for the blue light. So yeah, you can see if it's 30 or maybe if it's a, even a darker purple here. Yeah, I think it, it's hard to see when it's too dark. Yeah, so, so that's good for now. And you, can, you guys can keep adjusting it. All right, so let's create the glass material for our tube now. And back into the material editor. Uh, we had created this material earlier. Let's call it glass. Uh, let's set the refraction to maximum, 255. And we're going to set our reflection to, let's say, something around 156. Or let's just do maximum reflection. And uh, let's adjust the glossiness on the reflection to point something like 0.98. And let's do 0.98 just so that it's not at 100%. Uh, all right, one more thing I want to adjust. Uh, since since this is going to be a super sleek glass tube, it's nice to even have more reflections. So the way to increase the intensity of the reflection, uh, you're going to go and press on this L next to Fresnel IOR under reflection. And it's going to allow you to edit and modify it. The default is 1.6, but we're going to push it up a bit to 1.7. And the higher you go, the more intense the reflection is going to get. Okay, and I think that's I think that's good for our tube. And if we add a shell, like I had mentioned earlier, you can see that the effect changes because now it's like a it's a double wall uh, tube, which is how it should how it should look in reality. So you can increase and decrease the inner amount, uh, something super subtle, maybe like 0 0.04. I mean, play around with it, but I think this looks nice. Uh, we'll see later. We, we might remove it uh, once we add the other layers, but uh, for now we, we can just keep it there and we can uh, we can see how things go. All right, so let's go back into our render uh, window. And let's see how this looks. <coughs> nice. I think it's looking super, super nice. And and as we start to add more details, it's gonna look even more interesting. So you can see the very nice reflections of the of the lighting from the top and bottom. You can see the reflections of the tube. The HDRI is working really nice. The backdrop is working nice, and it's starting to come together. All right, so what we want to do now is we're going to, of course, keep saving your work. We're going to select everything that we have, the calligraphy piece. Uh, we're going to press Control V, which is going to copy uh, or duplicate our uh, geometry, our calligraphy. And let's delete all those modifiers that we created. So we have the shell, we have the smooth. <coughs> let's just delete that and go back to the original spline that we had, the very original one. All right, so I'm going to increase the sub steps now to 64. And <coughs> and now we want to isolate it just so so that's the only object that we see. So we're going to press Alt Q on the keyboard and it should isolate that object so that you can see it see it on its own. Uh, so so this is our new geometry that is based on our very original spline. Okay, so so what I'm gonna use now, and this is important, is uh, is a, it's a free plugin. It's called TieFlow, and uh, you can do super cool stuff with TieFlow. But this is a very very basic setup that's gonna help us here. 
if you can't get Typeflow, if you're not using 3D Max, then just follow what we did earlier with giving the tube thickness uh, through the spline and it's gonna give you the same similar effect, not the same effect, but there are lots of different ways that you can do what we're about to do. Okay, so after selecting our spline, we're gonna go to tie spline measure. This comes with a tie flow plugin. And this basically gives us more control in terms of what our uh, tube looks like. So you can see if you play with some of the settings in tie flow, uh, you can also animate stuff. Uh, if you increase the stretch percentage, you can, you can control how much of the spline gets covered with the tube. Uh, and there's some other cool stuff that you can experiment with. What we want to do in this uh, tutorial is we're going to go to radius on the side and we're going to adjust that. So we're going to set the thickness here and then if we go down, we're going to set the, we're going to change linear to curve and you can see that it's going to start out as a, as a circle and it's going to end to a point. So it becomes super cool and super interesting and much more dynamic instead of it just being a regular tube. And also if I play with the curve, I can also adjust the thickness from start to end. <coughs> so I think something like this is nice. And, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing we did on the first tube. I'm gonna give it a shell. And let's also adjust the material on this. And we're going to change the the glossiness to 0.7. And assign it to material. And now let's do the exact same process for a second time. Let's press Control V. Copy that. And again, I'm going to go and delete those modifiers that I made. So I'm back to square one. Press Alt Q so that you can isolate your spline. And now we're gonna create the actual lights that, that falls in the middle of the tube. So let's just give it some thickness. And I'm, I wanna see what I'm working with. So I just made a material and I called it clay. It's basically a white material. Uh, just because in 3D Max, uh, if it's glass, you can't see it. So it's like super see-through, you can't see it. So let me adjust the thickness of it. It's gonna be something very, very thin. Yeah, something like that. And let's go and create the light. So if I do a V-Ray light material, let's say I want something that feels pinkish. And I'll set it to like three, assign to material, and there we go. That's our material, that's the light. Okay. All right, so now if I exit the isolation mode and let's see what this looks like with our two new tubes. So you can see the inside tube, it's starting to show a bit. And the light, the light, yeah, let's go back to the light and make sure you enable uh, compensate camera exposure. And that's just gonna make it light up. So let's try that. Yeah, perfect, perfect looking yeah starting to look very very nice okay so next step let's select our light that we just created and we're gonna select the bottom part the spline at the bottom and we're gonna do detach so it's gonna be separate and I wanna give this another color so again let's uh, let's do shift drag pull the v-ray light material and let's change this to let's say orange and assign it to the material and let's see how that looks now nice yes it's looking it's looking very very nice now so uh, let's see how that looks and as you can see, now we have two colors and it's starting to look even nicer than, than what it was before. And if you notice, you'll see that 
like now you'll start to realize why we did those two tubes so the middle tube that we did it's basically picking up the light since it's frosted it's picking up the light and dispersing it and it's giving it also that tapered effect so it's not uniform throughout and the beauty of cursive writing and lettering and uh, scripts and calligraphy is that flow so one thing that we want to maintain is that flow and the feeling and the energy behind the calligraphy so we're like taking the calligraphy and we're doing it like times 10 or times 100 so so yeah I think this is starting to look nice one thing I want to do real quick is I'll just switch the colors I want the top one to be orange and the bottom one to be pink so let me do that real quick uh, so same thing I'm just going to select the top one and assign each material to each part so I'm just going to switch these colors up and yep that works all right so now the final step for this uh, process the lighting process is to go to the spheres the dots that we have and we're going to do the exact same process but this is much easier so I'm going to select my sphere press shift and scale it down a bit and I'm gonna give it that frosted material and I'm also gonna give it some uh, gonna give it a shell modifier so exactly what we did on the the inner tube of the calligraphy and press shift one more time and scale it down much smaller I'm gonna apply a light material to this and I'm also gonna delete the shell modifier so we're exactly replicating the process of what we did on the calligraphy and now that we have this triple sphere construction uh, I'm going to delete the other dot and I'm going to press shift and drag all three spheres that I just made and place it in its new position and basically this is going to this is going to complete our calligraphy with uh, with the whole lighting and you can you can see that it's it all looks good it looks very nice I think it looks cool All right, so now basically we have our calligraphy done. We have our light setup done. And now it's all about adding some details. So for this walkthrough and for this piece, what I did was I added uh, some light plugs and wires hanging out of them. And I just want to walk you through how I did that. And the more layers of detail you add to any piece, uh, the more hidden gems you have, the, the richer the art piece is going to be. And some people might notice it, some might not, but definitely it's something that will add more to to your final composition, and it's something that's gonna uh, that's gonna be appreciated definitely. All right, so now let's select our original tube, the outer tube, Control V, and let's duplicate that and Alt Q so I can isolate it, and let's delete all those modifiers we have and just keep it at an edit poly level and let's select some edges so what I want to do is now I want to create some rings on my tube and randomly let's just go and select some edges that are apart from each other and you're, you're gonna notice some similar techniques to what we did earlier we're gonna go to create shapes from spline and that's gonna just give us some new lines and we can just delete the the geometry that we just created with the tube we don't need it anymore okay so we have these tubes or we have these rings and give it some thickness maybe I'll make this into a black material so let's select the V-ray material <coughs> and make it black and add some reflection to it like 0.8 is good I think uh, and add some reflection to it maybe it's a bit matte so 0.8 and maybe maybe now that I'm looking at it on the tube I think we have a bit too much so I'm gonna just delete some uh, you can just delete them from the spline menu or you can make another edit spline uh, just so that in case you want to go back to your original uh, the number of rings that you had so I just like to create a new edit spline and select some of the rings that I don't want delete them and yeah I think I think that's a bit better All right, so now let's cre create those uh, light switches or plugs or whatever they're called. And 
this is the this is the shape that I was using on the tube and I'll quickly show you how I made this there's a very fast and quick technique so you can pull up any picture or image that you want from Google as a reference and just look at it from a side view and take the line tool and start to start to trace don't even worry about the smooth corners so now that I have this let me isolate it and uh, let me go into the vertexes and let me select fillet and this is gonna basically round my corners up and this is the profile of my of my switch or my plug and now let's go to the modifier list and let's do a lathe which is gonna spin it around itself and you just need to kind of tweak and adjust it a bit I'm gonna move this and yeah just smooth it out and maybe give it also a shell something very subtle and yeah that's it that's our that's our uh, plug and it's looking good so the top part which has an opening that's where the the wires are gonna go through alright so I wanna place them something like this on top of my calligraphy so a quick technique or a quick way that I do it and of course there's a million ways to do it I like to take a sphere or any object and choose auto grid and auto grid basically is gonna place that object on top of the geometry where your mouse is so I just like to quickly go in and just put spheres on check like just as placeholders as markers of where I want that plug to go and yeah just distribute them around And then I'm gonna take my plug. Let's just call it a plug for now. <coughs> uh, I'm gonna shift drag so I can duplicate it. And let's just duplicate it a few times. So it's gonna be much easier. And then I'm gonna do select each, press Alt A, which was for align. And just align each to one of the spheres. So at least it's in the same position. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into each and just uh, rotate it and move it a bit so that it it feels that it's coming out of the tube. And as soon as we do that, we're going to delete the sphere. So just do that a few times and just place them at any position that you feel looks best. And if we render that real quick, you can see that the scale and the positions all look good. And maybe also I'll go back to my rings uh, and just give them a bit of shell so that they can be a bit thicker. Uh, it's just an easier way to control the thickness. Okay. Uh, and let's maybe also make them more matte. So 0.7 for reflection. All right, so let's select one of our plugs and then right click and select similar. It should select all of the plugs that we have. Let's isolate those. And now we wanna create those wires that come out of them. So we're gonna select the line tool and Again, we're going to do auto grid so that it, it sticks to the, the plugs that we have. And just pull out random lines from the plugs. And just pull them down, uh, click and drag so that you can get a smooth line. And just two or three points should be more than enough. I, I'd say two points. So just do that super random, super quick. Don't worry about being efficient or precise. We're going to clean that up. Just something super fast. You don't want to waste too much time on this. It's a small detail. And now let's go and select each line and try to make it come out of that hole or opening that we have. 
and we're gonna adjust the lines and we're gonna adjust the points just so that it fits so super easy and use your judgment here in terms of uh, how you want them to look so one quick way to do this uh, even easier or faster is just use the spline just click on spline and try to attach all those wires that you just created then you don't need to jump in and out of each so so yeah just start to do what we did in the very beginning with the splines to smooth them out and play around with the positions of them of uh, if, they're, if they're falling down, if they're going up, and if you right click and press refine, you can create a new dot, a new point, and that's going to also allow you to go between the calligraphy, so even adding more detail to, to your piece. So I'm just going to keep doing that for, the, for all the wires and just see wh what feels best for each. So once we're happy with that, we're going to just add some thickness to it, make it something thin. And again, just make sure everything aligns. It's not going through the, the light tubes. Uh, it feels natural. It's not forced. And just keep using your judgment and eyeball everything. There's no right or wrong. All right, so once I'm happy with that, I'm going to just go in and give it uh, black material as well. and do some final tweaks and adjustments and let's render that out and I'm gonna give my switches my plugs uh, glass material and let's just render that out and it's looking good so if I zoom in, you should be able to see some of those details. All right, so now the final step is uh, creating the final level of detail, which is uh, just some random splines uh, that follow the shape of the calligraphy. Uh, some like wires that are hanging onto it and a bit of mess and chaos, subtle mess and chaos. So th this should be a fun process. All right, so for the last time, let's select our original tube and let's control V, duplicate it. And let's go and select our plugin, TyFlow. Just uh, drag anywhere on the screen and open the TyFlow editor. So what you want to do now is scatter some points onto this shape and then allow it to drive uh, the algorithm or the flow to create a bunch of splines for us in the same shape. So let's select birth. Uh, let's set the start and end to zero. And then let's uh, do position object and select our new tube that we created, the duplicated tube. And then let's do a path follow, and then let's select the same tube. We want the points to follow the same that uh, the path of the tube. And then let's do a slow and set it to 50. And you're gonna see the results in a bit. If you can't see, you let me just change the color of this, so you can see those dots are following the path of the calligraphy that we have. Uh, then the final step is to do spline paths and press create new and if you go into your animation and you start to move that tracker you can see how those lines are starting to move in the same path as the tube so we'll do some final tweaks and edits let's change the velocity and path follow and as you change it you'll see stuff changing on the screen itself so it gives you an indication uh, let's change the velocity of the attraction and uh, let's also change the velocity of the spin and make sure you you set it to locked 
it's gonna it's gonna look much more tight and closer to the tube and I'm gonna also increase my points let's say 60 and yeah I think that looks nice I think that looks nice so so let's just get rid of the tie spline measure we don't need that now and let's just stick to the tie splines and let's just do the thickness something very subtle and right click convert to edit poly and let's just apply a turbo smooth and now it doesn't matter if you change your animation uh, the timeline tracker it doesn't matter so now let's move on to do the final render uh, if you open up your render settings one thing that I always like to do on all my renders is uh, add the right kind of render elements so I'll show you how to do that if you just go to the end render elements let me just delete these so if you go to add you should or I usually do V-Ray wire color which gives me the color of each element as a mask and I do also V-Ray denoiser which gives me a couple of cool maps uh, and it also smooths out the final render so it doesn't have any noise in it so let's go and render this and see what the final outcome looks like with all our details and this is the final render and you can see those level of details the wires the stuff that's hanging on the lights the the, the rings and everything that we built just adds up layer by layer by layer and it gives it so much depth and it's just something that it's hidden gems as we mentioned that people can appreciate all right so now we want to get out of 3d and go into photoshop so the so if you look at the top left of your screen you'll see all the render elements that have been rendered out uh, let's just take a quick look at them so let's say the let's see so for example the v-ray wire color which are my masks uh, it's gonna it's gonna help me out to select certain parts when I when I composite this in Photoshop so the normals is a nice one it gives uh, some depth and shadows and highlights uh, if it's desaturated in Photoshop another cool one is the diffuse the refraction the reflection filters and these are just stuff that we can play around with in Photoshop so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select my final render go in Photoshop copy paste copy paste so whatever I like I'm just gonna copy and paste control C control V and I'm gonna just transfer everything over and and then the final step is I also want those inner tubes uh, that I created earlier just so that uh, just because the final render the mask it's gonna give me the the outer tube so I want to have control over the inner tubes so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to select each of the three tubes that we created, isolate them, and render them out. And I'm just going to copy-paste the, the alpha channel. So if you press the small circle, and I'm just going to copy-paste it into Photoshop. So this is the outer tube. And then I'm going to do the same for this. This is the inner tube, copy-paste. And then the very thin light thread that we have render and copy paste so now I have all my layers I have all my passes I have all my masks uh, transferred to Photoshop and now the final 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 step is just to composite everything and see uh, all our hard work come to to life and I'm excited to walk you through the final steps in Photoshop so just to recap what we did in 3d just a very quick overview of what our layers are, are made up of so we have the outer tube let me just split things up so we have the outer tube and then we have the inner tube which was frosted and then we have the light thread and we have these messy lines or the the random lines that we created on top of the tubes all right, so I'll see you guys in the next chapter.
All right, so now that we're in Photoshop, what I want to do is I don't want to uh, remake this scene. So I've opened up my, my final render that I had, and I want to walk you through the layers step by step and talk about it, and just so you guys can see how I made the composition and what each of the layers looks like and how it affects the final piece. So the first layer that we have is this uh, final render the one with the colors and then I place the thin light that we rendered on its own this light I just brought it in the mask and I set it to 50% linear dodge and I mask the places where it intersects so basically just uh, create a mask and choose a black color and you can basically mask those areas out so it's just gonna hide them and then I duplicated that exact same one and I set it to screen at 30 percent so we can see a nice white line uh, as if it's the source of our light going through the tubes so what I did next was I wanted to intensify the color of the lights the orange and the pink and I basically brought in this medium sized tube mask I brought it into the scene I colored the top part orange and the bottom part pink and I gave it a slight blur and I, I basically did two sets of blurs so this is the first one so this was one pass and then I did the second pass you can see they're exactly the same and I set the first one to both of them to linear dodge and I set it to 50% while I set the second one uh, at 100%. So it's bas I'm basically doing 150%. So, so this is going to intensify our lights, as you can see. All right. The next step is adding uh, some, some another set of light source uh, on top of our composition. And I had an image that looked like this. You can find many of these uh, flares and lightings on Google. You can find them for free. So I just set this at 70% soft light. And you can see it's instantly going to give it another level of detail and depth. And next I have this image of particles. They, call, they usually call them dust particles. And again, you can find a lot of these free or paid. Uh, I just desaturated it, set it to soft light, and it's very subtle. So you can see those dust particles around the calligraphy. Finally, I brought in my mask of the first tube. And I selected just the white parts so I can have the tube. And what I did was I gave it a fill of zero and I gave it some drop, drop shadow. And I set it to 30%. And it's just gonna give us a slight shadow underneath the tubes, which also adds to the layer of depth. So you can see my setup is pretty basic and I don't have a lot of layers. I mean, this is where we started. And I think the difference is kind of big between uh, start to end in Photoshop uh, but this is this is basically my final piece uh, which I showed you in the very beginning of the tutorial and the walkthrough and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a few things and I'm really excited to see what you guys can do with it and please share your work I'd love to see and please do share your work I'd love to see the results and stay creative dream big and the sky's the limit see you guys